All right, well, welcome everyone to my first YouTube video, Household Journeys, with Fabian, it's moi. Um, now, uh, in this video, or I should say in this journey, uh, what I ended up doing is I made a bench with an accent wall in my yard. And uh, what this ended up being was it was actually really like four projects in one because um, I put down some pavers and some landscaping. I made a bench, there was an accent wall, and I also reinforced my fence. So a little backstory as to how all this came up was back in, during the winter time, we had a lot of rainfall, a lot of uh, high winds, so my fence actually fell over. And back in early June, I had to, well, the fence got replaced. So to add a little bit of more longevity is I wanted to reinforce the fence, but I also wanted it to look nice as well as make it more accommodating for um, for visitors because I have a lot of, I host family quite a bit. And so sometimes I just, I run out of space. Um, now I had this area right between the lawn and the fence, which was just empty space. It was just a bunch of dirt. So I figured I might as well use that space in order to maximize the, um, the, uh, the seating capacity in my backyard while making it look nice and while reinforcing the fence. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I did all of that. And let's go ahead and hit that title card. All right, so what I started doing here first was I measured uh, the middle section of all the posts because that's where I wanted the the bench and the accent wall to sit. Um, and to do that, I ended up uh, cutting a hole for each uh, post that I'm gonna put. But interesting little thing that happened was that the people that put up the fence, they did not completely remove the old posts. So I ran into a little bit of a struggle there because some of the posts, the bottom sections were still there and uh, a lot of the cement was still there as well. So I kind of had to dig all that out. And at one point you actually see me use a jack here to get them out because I just digging wise was, it was not working. Um, but once I was able to get all those things out, I was able to, to uh, put the posts in the, there. Um, and I did, really didn't want to cut into the two by fours. So what I did is that I notched the posts so that way the two by fours that are already framed up on the fence it could just fit right there kind of like you know putting lego pieces together um, now when i did put the posts uh something i want to mention is that i wasn't fully able to dig down the two plus feet ideally you want to dig down two feet and then about another four to six inches for gravel and drainage i wasn't really able to do that uh, because of a lot of the uh, the cement that I was running into. But I got pretty much close, so we'll see how well it holds up. I, I'm pretty confident that it'll, it'll be fine because the other posts are fully secured. All right, and then um, to put the posts in there, I ended up using two bags of um, post cement for each post. Um, something I'll mention is that uh, I, 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 there's probably more than what I should have, so I ended up having these really wide holes. The, the holes that I dug were too wide. And it was because I, I had to dig extra to get out the old chunks of, of cement. Um, so with the, with the posts, I, I threw them in there, you know, um, dry. And then I just sprayed them down with some water, which is uh, just so basically just followed the instructions on the bag. And uh, I, th I think it worked out well. Um, now, it, something that you won't, could do uh, to kind of um, help out the, the, the bonding between the posts and the fence is that you could take, actually, a piece of two by four here. What you could do is you could take some screws and screw them into the wood, have the screws stick out a little bit. So what happens is that over time, the wood will kind of become, it'll loosen up from the cement. But if you have those screws in there, the screws will help keep it anchored. I didn't do that because I was being kind of lazy about it, but I really should have. It, it just would have been a better peace of mind, but not a big deal. All right, next up, 
right there next to my lawn, I had these um, giant pieces of, of wood that were separating the lawn from that, the, that kind of dirt pile-ish kind of thing. So I had to remove those because that's where the pavers were going to go. They ended up being pretty stubborn, so it did take me a while to cut and get those out. But what was nice is that it did eliminate some of the digging for me, so I didn't have to dig too deep to put the pavers. Now with the pavers, uh, I went down about four inches, so that way I could put two inches of gravel for drainage, and then about an inch of sand followed by the uh, the pavers that were on top. And that gave me a pretty level, but that ended up making the pavers pretty level with, with the lawn. I did have one spot that actually ended up, well, I should say, the beginning of it ended up being a little too low, but it's it's not a big deal. Um, when my, when I water my lawn, I just get, uh, the water pulls up a little bit right there, but again, it's it's nothing nothing too crazy. Um, so as I started putting putting down the the pavers, I used the sand to get me a nice level um, surface, so that way all the pavers line up with each other. And right here, you can actually see that I um, I had to cut some of the pavers. It took me a couple of tries. It did break a couple, but um, once I actually started taking my time and going slowly, I was able to cut them to the size that I needed. After that. Uh, what I did here was I used some polymeric sand and filled in the joints. So what the sand does is that when you wet it and it begins to, to cure, it bonds the, um, the pavers together to keep them from shifting. What I did next was I, um, I started reinforcing the top of the fence. And the reason I did this was because when my fence fell down, the top part of the fence was um, where it failed. The the post did rot on me, so that was also a huge um, huge point of um, uh, failure on the fence. But the fence actually could have stood up a little bit longer. It would have put less stress on the post had uh, the the joints right there at the top of the fence had those joints been reinforced. The post would have um, been able to withstand a lot more of those high winds. What I mean by that is, I'm gonna use this example here. So let's say this this bottom part is the post, and then you put you join two pieces of wood here, and right there that joint in the center. Well, it only has some screws kind of going down, so it doesn't have a lot of strength holding these down or holding them in place. You can see just the slightest little tab here and the wood already lifts up. However, if you put a piece of wood over the seam and you stagger the joints, then at that point it's a lot stronger and it could withstand a lot more, a lot more pressure and a lot more forces. So that's why I ended up putting those extra two by fours at the top frame of, of my fence. Okay, afterwards I had, I bought two sheets of uh, half inch birch plywood and I stained the back of them because uh, I wanted the back to be able to resist water and all that stuff. Um, so when you see me putting the boards up on the fence, again, the stain part is the back side and the bare side is actually gonna be flipped towards the front because I'm going to stain that side later on. And uh, the way I, I initially attached these these uh, panels to the fence was I just used some brad nails to hold them in place because I ended up making a frame for the accent wall and the frame is what fully secured everything to the fence and um, I, used, I used stainless steel screws for everything there. And uh, the reason I use stainless steel screws is because stainless steel screws, they do not corrode. So if you're gonna have an outdoor application, those work great. Once I had uh, finished the, the accent wall there, I went ahead and got started on building the supports for the bench. And I made them out of cinder blocks. The way I stuck all the cinder blocks together was I used some uh, Loctite 3X, I think is what it was called. It's a construction grade adhesive. So I just basically glued all the cinder blocks together 
and that ended up creating a really strong bond. Um, you can see here that I'm also uh, cutting the uh, the two by fours and I'm putting on top of the support and I glued those down using the same adhesive and it bonded the wood to the center blocks very well. They do not budge, so they're super secure. Um, something that did happen though, was that uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, this entire bench ended up being 14 feet long. The two by fours that I bought were eight feet. So I had to cut and join them all together. Um, and then in the center, what I did was instead of having them all be in line with one another, I staggered the joints as kind of what I mentioned earlier. By staggering the joints, uh, it makes it a lot stronger so that way the wood doesn't just split down this one seam. And I also ended up putting some um, um, some two by fours underneath where I screwed them from underneath for more support. That way the joints don't come apart and it doesn't sag in the center. All right, so what I ended up doing next was um, I ended up putting a backrest. Now, initially I had no plans to make a backrest. The accent wall itself was going to be the backrest but I ended up having a gap between the two. So I figured I'd just fill it in with the backrest and I cut it at a 15 degree angle because I found, found that 15 degrees actually ended up being pretty comfortable for when you kind of recline back on, on the, uh, the, the couch here, the, the seven seater. Now, uh, something to keep in mind is that the backrest does kind of float in a sense and I'll show you guys what I mean by that a little bit later on. Um, but what I did is that I also had to attach it in the center because these were two individual boards. So that way both boards are nice and flush with one another. Here, uh, what I ended up doing is that with some of the leftover, I ended up cutting that off and those are gonna end up being the caps or the armrests for the um, for the two ends of the bench right there on top of the, of the cinder blocks. Once I had that cut out, I went ahead and started sanding everything because I'm going to stain and paint this here in a little bit. I initially used my belt sander, which worked out fine, but it, it belt sanders are a little bit heavier. So um, it, it, and they're bulkier. So it's not the easiest thing to work with um, when trying to sand things vertically. But after that, um, what I ended up doing next was that construction grade adhesive that I had used, that Loctite, after it was done curing, I it, it oozed out from the seams. So I took an angle grinder and I just kind of cut off the parts that were the the, the bit of, adhes of adhesive that had oozed out from in between the seams. And the reason I did that was because I was, the next step was to plaster over the cinder blocks. So I needed a, a flat surface in order to do that. Now, initially I did use plaster to, to create the smooth finish on uh, over the cinder blocks, but it was really hot when I was doing this. Um, I was in the upper 90s, low 100s, so this stuff was green on me super fast. I ended up using cement all, which did work a little bit better. It gave me a little bit more time to, to work with. Um, but really it was more of just a, a learning curve and I had to work with a really soupy consistency because like I said, this stuff was hardening on me within 10 minutes just because of how hot it was outside. So I did that to, to all four parts, all, all four um, columns of, of the bench and when I was done with that, I ended up making a little lip on the back of the bench because when I put the cushions on there, the cushions had a tendency to slide back. So by putting a lip there that secured the cushions in place so that way they wouldn't fall off. And then um, once I had all the wood in place and everything was nice and dry, I gave it a, another sanding and this one was just light sanding. I did it by hand, so nothing intensive, just to be sure that it was clean of any kind of debris. And, and I also wiped everything down, blew everything, up, all the dust off with my, um, with my uh, leaf blower there. So for the staining, I don't have a paint gun, so I just painted everything by hand using those cheap dollar sponge brushes from, from Home Depot. And as you can see, in the first application, it looks pretty streaky. The color's not the richest, but in the second coat, 
way more vibrant. The streaks kind of dissipate a little bit. So that ended up looking pretty well after the second coat. And that's all I did. I just did two coats. Uh, afterwards, I used flat black exterior paint to paint the frame to give it a nice little bit of, of contrast there. And then um, you can see that I also ended up painting the bottom as well. Even though the bottom is not very visible and it does get hidden by the back support, I went ahead and did it anyway. After that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I really don't want water getting behind this thing. So I put a bead of silicone around the inside of the frame and I used painter's tape there as a guide because I'm not very good at um, like caulking or, or, or putting silicone down in between seams. They always come out really ugly. So by using the painter's tape, I'm able to get a lot cleaner edge uh, when, when doing that. I also put silicone right there at the top of the fence where the frame met the, uh, the two by fours. Again, so that way water doesn't seep into the back of the accent wall and start creating any kind of mold or things like that. At this point, the only thing left to do is uh, just the landscaping aspect of it. And I started off by putting some landscaping fabric underneath in between the supports. That way no weeds or unwanted plants grow from or start growing underneath the bench. And then I went ahead and put some rocks. I like to use two different kinds of rocks, some kind of medium size, some bigger, because I think that just provides a more um, natural kind of look. Now, there are some things here that I didn't record myself doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what that looks like right now. So a couple of extra things that I ended up doing is if you can see right there, I put papers right there in the centers because the rocks by themselves just looked a little empty, looked like it was missing something. So I think that helped out, give it a more completed look. Um, other thing that I, uh, well, I should say something that I didn't do is, you can see here on the outside, everything is finished. It has a relatively smooth look to it, but I didn't go all the way back. You can still see the individual blocks there. Um, so if you see it at a certain, so, or I should say from a certain angle, you can see that, but I don't know, maybe that's, it's not a, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I was just kind of being kind of lazy about it. And I was extremely done working with that cement all. So, I mean, looking at it, it, at least for me, it does kind of bother me a little bit. I might go back and, um, cement all, all the way to the ends, not a hundred percent sure. All right, and here is the finished product. So overall, I really enjoy it. I think it looks great in the yard. It, like I mentioned earlier, really optimizes a lot of more um, seating area in the yard. It provides a nice focal point. So it's very comfortable and all my friends and family have really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with, the, with how this turned out. All right, so that's the project in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey with me here. Um, the uh, By the way, the cushions that I used for the couch, the big ones were from Home Depot. The little ones that you guys see on the sides, those are from Amazon. I'll try to put as many links as I can to everything that I purchased as well as some of the tools that I used for this project. But again, um, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you guys stay tuned for another household journey. See you guys later.